know, we can do whatever we want if we just believe we're able to. All right, guys, so now we have a magician in the hood of Los Angeles. I'm kidding, but slightly serious. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So I really like the title of this movie. It's called Slight, as in sleight of hand. And that is a technique that a lot of magicians use around the world and have been doing it for decades and hundreds and hundreds of years. And I remember a number of weeks ago, my homeboy hit me up saying, hey, man, have you seen the new movie Slight or do you have you heard about it? I was like, no, man, what is that? So he sent me a trailer. I looked at it and I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember something about that. I completely forgot. It just went completely under my radar. And I just got back from the theater from seeing it. And I want to talk to you about it. There, it's been out for it, it originally came out at the Sundance Film Festival and it had pretty good reviews right there. It, during that time, it's on Rotten Tomatoes right now, of course, with about 30, 40 reviews and the reviews are good. But I wanted to give my opinion on it. And the, it's directed by J.D. Dillard. And if you've never heard of him before, that's okay. Because this is his first feature. He's done a number of short films. And you can look that up on IMDb if you're into short films. I'm usually not into short films. I only pay attention to them when they announce them at the Oscars. But this is directed by J.D. Dillard. Uh, he wrote and directed it. If you've seen the trailers for this movie, you also see that it's from the same producers as Get Out. And that's Jason Blum. He's the head guy over at Blumhouse Productions, and they always are producing films that usually come out towards the beginning of the year that are like $5 million and less. And $5 million to like a Hollywood budget is just pennies on the dollar, just absolutely nothing. And um, this film was also produced by uh, WWE Studios. Um, I started watching wrestling back in like 1999, 2000. I know that's still popular, but they've been trying to get into the, the movie business for a while now, and they always dish out something that's pretty good, usually a cheap horror thriller, but you know, for what they are, I do appreciate them. And when I was talking about, you know, producing films for a cheap amount, this movie was super duper cheap. It was only $250,000. I mean, that is dirt cheap you know, for a wide release and also to get the type of attention it's got. And I, there's a rule that you always want to follow. Like a studio is always satisfied when at the box office worldwide or wherever they're distributing the film, it makes at least three times the budget. I don't want to say that they're happy or pissed off. The safe word is satisfied because, you know, I just want to draw it in the line right there and just say satisfied. So they, they usually are satisfied. And this only 250000 right now is right under $3 million. If you look on Box Office Mojo, $2,976,000. Uh, $2,976,000. Uh, $605. So they made well over their money multiplying it. And so, you know, it's doing pretty good. And um, so going into this, you know, I was normally turned on. Uh, uh, and I'm sorry, I was initially turned on by Jacob Lattimore. Um, I like this guy. He's real young. He's only 21 years old. I just looked that up. And um, he was prominent in the movie that came out last year, Collateral Beauty, uh, which had no, 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 Naomi Harris and Will Smith. Um, he was the character of, uh, of Time. And, you know, it was a small role, but it had a nice significant punch to it. And I like that. Um, there's other films that he's been a part of, but now he is in Slight. And what Slight is about, Slight of Hands, what, what it's about is he is a street magician. Man, he's just out there trying to survive. He's trying to hustle. And that's one of the things that I really did like about his character because he's just taking and hustling onto a whole other level. I mean, he's willing to damn near kill himself. I mean, he's putting all his health on the line to take care of himself and his little sister because uh, his parents passed away. Uh, his dad passed away a number of years ago, so he didn't really grow up with the father figure. And then his mom passed just recently. And so he's dealing with that. Just graduated high school, has a younger sister that can't be over the ages of eight or nine. And she is just adorable, just one of the cutest little things uh, that you can imagine. And, um, you know, he, he, he has some things going for himself, but his mom died. And just sometimes when you live in life and you're enjoying yourself, just wham, uh, you know, just something can come out of nowhere and just ruin all your plans. And that is exactly what put our character Bo, his name is Bo in the movie, Jacob Lattimore, put him in this position to where he's like, damn, 
I don't know what I have to do, but I got to survive. I got to take care of my sister, you know. And so he starts living a life that he really doesn't want to selling drugs, you know, just to pay the bills and take care of his sister, because, of course, he doesn't want to get her taken away. And the first thing that I noticed that really just stood out to me in this movie that I liked a lot is the soundtrack. Unfortunately, and I'm sorry, guys, I did not look up who the soundtrack um is by but it's a really nice soundtrack it's a really dope soundtrack I, i'll probably look it up here in a second but looks like it's taking me too long but the soundtrack stood out to me um a, a lot in this film there was a, a good six or seven times where a beat would drop and my head was bobbing i was tapping my feet on the ground or doing both and i heard a few other people in the auditorium doing that with me and it just really came through very strong especially doing a lot of the montages when the film is transitioning from one point to another going from a to b and also just showing our character Bo doing his magic on the streets and whatnot it was very nice i liked that and it stood out so whoever is behind that soundtrack two thumbs up to you another great thing about the movie is just the character jacob Lattimore, Bo himself i mean he's a he's a nice handsome young man that you know, gets the respect from all the people in his neighborhood, whether it's man, woman, child, little boy, little girl, this person working over here. He's just he's just a nice guy. Uh, looks like he has his head straight on the shoulders, you know, doesn't want to cause any problems. Just, you know, he's just trying to eat. And, um, you know, he's very innocent, too. Um, his confidence is not exactly where it needs to be. He's kind of awkward socially uh, around women, around girls. Um, he just doesn't know how to talk to them. And, um, you know, that's kind of funny. You know, I can kind of relate to that myself because, you know, once upon a time, you know, in my life, when I was coming up, you know, when I, if I was around a pretty girl, I would kind of freeze up and like kind of just like, uh, uh, yeah, you know, and kind of talk like that. And that's kind of how Bo was. So, you know, I just like that human element that, you know, he had within his character that just kind of made me personally relate to him more. I also talked about his sister named Tina. He does have a little sister named Tina. Uh, her real name is Storm Reed. Like I said, she is freaking adorable. And the other main actor that we have is Holly, played by uh, Sechelle Gabrielle. And all three of these, the two, uh, the two young ladies and Jacob Lattimore, they did a fantastic job with the acting. I really believed them when they was uh, in hard times and didn't know, you know, what was going to happen to them next. Um, especially Tina and uh, Jacob Lattimore's character, Bo. So the acting with all the uh, characters was spot on. That was great. I really did appreciate it. Another character that I liked a lot um, that surprised me, and I really didn't realize who he was until the very end of the movie because he was playing a role that I'm just not accustomed to because um, I really just don't watch that much TV. There's a few TV shows that I like to stick to, but um, the uh, one of the antagonists in this movie, his name is Dulé Hill or Delay Hill. Uh, he does a lot of TV. He played in Psyched. Um, he was the black guy and uh, she's all that a 90s movie um, um, high school drama that I grew up in and the reason why I said black guy is because if you've seen the parody spoof movie um, not another teen movie they make a big deal about a joke like oh I'm the token black guy you know you have all these white people around but then there's just that one black guy that's always wearing a letterman jacket and you know it's always good in sports or whatever and he played the real version and she's all that and also a number of other uh tv shows and he did a great job as well as the antagonist and just to get back to the plot of the film bo is just trying to make money and he's uh doing street magic and he's selling drugs and he just gets into a situation to where he's like damn how did i get into this situation how am i going to get out of it and he just really gets in too deep and he just wants to get out and the harder he tries to get out you know he he's human he makes a wrong decision here a bad decision here and it just gets him deeper into the game and he's like no what am i doing and you know i need to get out of this situation you know what the hell is going on now of course the main thing that you're kind of wanting to see is how is he doing all these magic tricks in the movie what's going on is it really sleight of hand is he just that quick does he really have magical powers 
Well, you're just going to have to see the movie for yourself. Of course, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But the way that they were doing all that was pretty clever. There was some magic tricks. I'm just like, man, how the hell are you doing that? That is just freaking impossible. But, you know, this is an illusion. They're supposed to trick you. And while I don't necessarily believe in magic for real, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of clever ways that these magicians that's been around for a long time throughout the world, throughout the country, that they just have all these tricks and they're just masters of illusions and the magic that they put into this movie it was really creative the plot and story of it was well, not really a story just a running plot but you know he's just doing all these magic tricks and you know it's kind of nice just to kind of see that mixed up with you know uh him just trying to survive in los angeles you know dealing with you know a drug lifestyle every day you know putting those two elements together was something that i had never seen before and i like how um the uh, the uh director jd dillard handled that he did a great job with that now some of the things that i don't like about the movie was um the director this is his first feature I'm, he can sure he'll do a lot better than me than i would do on my if i tried to uh, direct a movie but some of the times when he was transitioning between the scenes, it was kind of done abruptly and kind of ruined the mood. Like if two characters were engaging in a sexual act, you know, they would start making out and about to have sex or something. But, you know, the way that scene would end and go to the next one, it just kind of like ruined the moment for you. And, you know, there was a few, a number of long pauses and long breaks of a black screen and it just didn't flow well. That only happened about three or four times and took up less than 60 seconds in the whole movie. But when you're transitioning from scene to scene, you want it to flow smoothly. And he could have did a little bit better there, in my opinion. Something else that I just really didn't care for is I understand that uh, Bo is in a tight situation and he's in certain uh, he's in certain situations to where he has to think quickly. Uh, but there was just two key scenes to where I really did not like uh, the decision that he made. Um, yes, he is human being and nobody is perfect, but to me, I kind of really wanted him to stand up to, uh, his adversaries more, stand up for himself more. And, and during these scenes, he was just really easily influenced. And I really just didn't care for that. And like I said, the, uh, the villain of the film or one of the antagonists, Angelo, played by Dulé Hill, um, he did a great job. Um, I really did like his character. I was very surprised because I just never really was turned on by his acting before. But in this one, he came across as a charming guy that, you know, can be trustworthy. But at the same time, you know, you live in this type of lifestyle. You just don't know and you have to be careful. And, you know, when uh, the crap was about to hit the fan, you know, I was like, OK, damn, you know, OK, this guy is serious. He is not joking around. He wants his drugs. He wants his money. And if you try to screw this guy, he, you know, he's not going to be holding any punches. You know, he's going to let you know, don't F me over again, no matter if you're on his side or you're against him initially. And but the thing about it is, while he came across as a true villain or a true bad guy, I still respected his character because in the end, he had a code and he lived by the code. And it's just like, OK, honor me. Don't screw me over. Um, and, you know, whether you like it or not, I mean, if somebody screwed him over, you know, he let he did let them know in the beginning uh, that still he's still a bad guy. But, uh, you know, he had a code that, you know, he lived by and, you know, that I could respect. You know, I really liked that. Overall, the movie is a fun movie. I really did enjoy it. I went in with mediocre to low expectations and came out smiling as I was walking out the theater over an hour ago. I kind of turned back to somebody walking out of me. I was like, hey, you know, it's pretty good. And, you know, he was like, yeah, it was pretty good. And I was laughing in the theater. I cared about the characters. I was really interested in seeing how this was going to play out. But at one point in time during the movie, I was kind of saying to myself, OK, there really is no plot to this movie other than him just trying to get out. We he just got a uh, bow did not set a goal to where he's taking necessary steps, you know, to where, you know, he can his goal can come into fruition towards the end. It's just we're seeing him live his everyday life and we don't know where he's going. But at one point, kind of during the second act, you do kind of say to yourself, OK, you know, this is what the movie's about. This is where it's trying to go. OK, that's cool. I guess we can just run with that. And then you accept it and you just kind of want the movie to end. And there's just one more little thing towards the end that kind of had to do with the magic, because there is a climax towards the end of the movie that I really did enjoy. Um, it was intense. It was also funny, and it did remind me, like, oh, okay, snap, this movie is rated R. Crap, I, you know, I forgot about that. 
Um, but I was kind of saying to myself, okay, if you're going to approach the scene like this, wouldn't it have been more realistic if you use this device instead of this device? Um, I don't want to spoil it for you here. If you see the movie, you're obviously going to know what I'm talking about. But I think the director thought of that and did little key things that, you know, made it make sense because, you know, just if you're going into a drug dealer's house to wreck shop and seek revenge, um, you know, you're going to have to, you know, get down and dirty as soon as you get there. And I think the director handled that well. So it's not a big gripe. Uh, it's just a small one, just a little lit nitpick. But overall, guys, I really did enjoy the movie. If I had to write, uh, if I had to rate um, slight out of a one out of 10, I would give it a seven out of 10. Yes, a seven out of 10. But guys, this movie has been out for about a week now. Have you seen it already? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. Hey guys, I'm a Marvel fan and I really want to go to the red carpet premiere of Black Panther that comes out February of next year. Is it a good chance that I will go? Possibly not. It, you know, it is a long shot, but I'm going for it because I believe in myself and you should believe in uh, you should believe in me too. So help me out guys by commenting and subscribing and doing all that stuff to get me the exposure to get to that red carpet. If you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up 1,000 times. And if you didn't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why. Not a stupid comment, but a good comment. And still, give me the thumbs up 1,000 times. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're at the very beginning of the summer movie season. And so I'm going to be trying to give you as much content as I can. And you want to be subscribed to my channel so you can see all of it. And also, share this video 1,000 times. That will help me out too. Uh, go ahead and look up my website as well. Check out my written reviews and you can bookmark it. And also look me up on social media. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my review slash opinion of Slight. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.